Hi, everybody. Welcome to our last episode of the season for the Garden Girl. Um, don't forget to go over, if you haven't voted yet, go over and vote in our third annual Great Gardeners Contest. So get on my Facebook page, pick your favorite one out. They have their own little album, so it's all right there for you. Pick one so I can pick a couple winners. Uh, stay tuned. When we come back here, we're going to cut to a break. But we are going to go over, this is kind of like, I know we had an episode called Potpourri, but I just can't figure out another good name for this one, like mishmash mix. What? Because there's a lot of things we do in the fall, and there's a lot of things you need to jump on top of. So we're going to go over kind of a slew of stuff in the amount of time we have. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. For clean air you can breathe in a clean looking home exterior, Ultra Clean. Locally owned and operated offers both air duct cleaning and pressure washing for your home. Give them a call at 330-243-3996 to help clean up the air you and your family breathe and your home's outside appearance. For fastidious librarian Emily Skinner, each day was fueled by thorough preparation for events to come. Well, somewhere along the way, Emily went right on living. But you see, with the help of her Raymond James financial advisor, she had planned for every eventuality, which meant she continued to have the means to live on, even at the ripe old age of 187. Life well planned. See what a Raymond James advisor can do for you. Hi everybody, welcome back. Okay, so if you're like me, you know how a lot of us gardeners, we're running like crazy people in May, trying to get our stuff, trying to get stuff planted. Cold crops are in, some of them are coming on. You know, April and May get kind of crazy if you do your cold weather crops and you're going into annuals and you're trying to get the perennials awake and get the beds clean. Well, fall's kind of the same way. and. I tried to cover some of it last year, but I'm, so I'm not gonna get deep into it because you can go and watch the episodes on uh, WJRTV2.com under Original Programming, Garden Girl. You can go back to last fall and see that one. But I, I'm just gonna, I know we have some new viewers and stuff, or some of you guys don't have computers, so I'm gonna touch base on it. Um, fall is a crazy time of year for me. Uh, a lot of things, it's, it's almost as bad or worse than spring. There's a lot of things that you guys need to write down on your checklist to do. If you don't have that piece of paper and pencil, go grab it really quick because you're going to need it. Um, one, if you guys planted your gourds, if you haven't harvested them already, you want to harvest them and start drying them. Nine out of ten times, even if they don't die back, you really don't want them to go through any hard frost. So we're, again, we're gonna watch the weather. If you can let them naturally die back, that's fine. Um, if you did the like birdhouse gourds, these are gonna take a while to dry. These are the ones that we see, um, all different shapes and sizes. This one here looks like I'm gonna lift weights with him. That's how I stay strong. Anyhow, they come in all different shapes and sizes. So it takes a while to dry these. Um, you want a cool place. You don't want them in the heat. You do want to bleach them for sure. Give them that diluted bleach bath that we had a couple episodes ago, how I was washing my gourds. Oh my God. So it's, it's just something that has to be done. It gets the bacteria off of them. Then you're going to store them. Cool, dry place out of the sun, store them. It's just going to take a while. I mean, and there's some people, honestly, um, if you say, well, I've heard to put them in the sun for a few days, you can, but just don't leave them there because if you're leaving them out in the sun, chances are they're out in the weather. You can't have them getting high humidity, lots of moisture on the rot. Um, but what you wanna do, don't let them touch. 
store them apart, and that's usually what I do is on a screen or something, um, and it just takes a while. But these are the ones that you see sometimes at these fall festivals and stuff that are painted, or they're, they're made into a birdhouse, or all kinds of stuff. Some people make them into uh, all kinds of crafts. Kids paint on them everything. I like to grow them because they're fun. So these ones here, they'll be up for grabs, but don't worry, I saved my own. Um, so just wanted to touch base on the gourd thing. What the other thing I want to touch base on, we are in mid-October. I know not all of you do the secondary season of cold weather crops. I do, because again, to throw them in the ground or throw them in my pots in August, um, I like, and I just, I couldn't bring the whole pot in because it's way too heavy. So um, I used that big smart pot. So once my potatoes were done and they had died back, they were an earlier potato, I harvested them, put in new potting soil, and I put in my radishes and my kale. Now, the fun thing with that was, if any of you guys have ever heard of microgreens, this is kind of some of the stuff they use, are the baby starts. So if you're doing pork or something, when these guys come up and they're just teeny, teeny, tiny, they still have seed leaves on them, you can go in and nip them off, and they are really good for you, and they taste really good when you garnish stuff with them. But then you can just let the rest grow on. Me, I'll start, I pulled this one. I wish I wouldn't have pulled them yet. But you know, these cold weather crops, you're gonna get a good bang for your buck out of. The little bit of kale, that's gonna get washed, clipped, thrown in my salads. It's so good for you. And if you remember in the first season, or you can go back to the first season, what you'll find is a recipe that I did for kale chips. So if you've already been growing, I said, Heather, mine's way bigger. That's fine, not a problem. You know, if you, if you grew the blue Lanciato, what is it, Lanceletto, Lanciato, it's, a, it's the blue, really curly leaf. Anyhow, that one's really good. Um, but kale chips are easy, they're fun, they're good for you. And there is a recipe in the first season there. Um, and I think it was one of the last episodes. So I would, if you didn't do them this year, I hope this kind of inspires you to try them for next year because kale will take a beating under 32. Kale's gonna be one of your last men standing. And that's the nice thing about it. So clip away, get your vitamins, have fun with it. Um, the next thing on the checklist is, I, I don't know how you guys do it, um, seed saving. You know, a lot of you guys that have the purple comb flowers or your black eyed Susans, and you want them somewhere else and you just want to start them from seed because your plant isn't big enough to divide or whatever, um, now's the time to start saving your seed. This one here is a straw flower and you can see it's poofy. Um, I put them in Ziploc bags, I put the date on them and what they are. T trust me, learn. I, I know some of you guys are laughing because you guys know my tales of woe on this make sure you label them because, oh boy, it can be a mess. Some of them you can tell, but then some of them you can't. Um, so once they're dry, I will take the, the flower head off, but it was such a mess. The straw flowers, they just poof like a dandelion. So it's in a little bag. It can, it can finish its little last bit. I'll leave it open, then I'll get this, the flower head out. But you need to start bringing them in, cutting them. When they die back, like your cone flowers and your rutabacchias, you can let them die back on the stalk. Just get them cut. Use some twine, twisty ties, pipe cleaners. I don't care. Tie them, hang them upside down. And when they're really super, super, super dry, go ahead and get them in your Ziploc baggies. Same with your tomatoes. I, I don't know about you guys, but I still, I know it's October, but we're just now like finishing getting our last tomatoes. If there was an heirloom that you liked, now's the time to save seed. I know not everybody does it and that's cool. That's cool. But if you do, now's the time to get it. And chances are, it's probably not your prime one. You always want to save your prime one, but I understand, but better late than never. So get your seeds saved on any of your tomatoes as well. Um, also, last but not least, if you did potatoes, the late season potatoes, like the Evas, um, gosh, I'm trying to think of a couple others, but uh, uh, if it's a late season potato, Chances are you got to get it out of there. Even if it hasn't died back, you can't let them go through 
hard freezes and stuff. That ain't gonna work. So get in there, lift them out, get them stored so that you have your potatoes for Thanksgiving. Okay, all right, stay tuned. When we come back, we're gonna jump into the last part of all the things that need to be done. I think the hands-on aspect is going to give you an opportunity to explore, find out what you're good at, what you like, and you're not going to have mountains of debt. What you're going to have is a marketable skill that even if you don't love it, you can use that to pay to go on to college and get that degree. And we've got a number of students that do that. They're, they're very mature. I think we're a great hands-on exploration base. Hi, I'm Elaine Miller with Naturally Green Cleaning Service. My company serves both commercial and residential clients. We do general cleaning, spring and fall, empty homes to get them move-in ready, and final cleans for new construction. We use eco-friendly cleaning products that leave your home or office fresh, clean, and safe for you, your family, pets, or coworkers. Our focus at Naturally Green is to provide excellent customer service paired with outstanding work to build a relationship of trust with you, our clients. Having served the area four plus years, we have had many referrals and testimonials that you can access on our website at www.naturallygreencs.com. Our work sells itself, therefore we have never had any contracts even with our largest commercial accounts. Call us today for your free quote and see what makes our company stand out. Hi everybody, welcome back. Okay, so hopefully you still have the pen and paper out. I said this last year, I'm gonna say it again, and I know I say it in the spring and summer too. Weed, go weed. I know, I personally like weeding, but I know it's not everybody's thing. Get your gloves on, get your forks, go out there and weed. Because all these weeds right now are gonna try to set seed you will have a bigger issue on your hands next spring if those things seed out and then they multiply. So you are way further ahead to go in there, rip those suckers out and stay with it here. I know it's, I know we're gonna, it's gonna get rainy, it's gonna get ugh, and it just is what it is and it's cooler out, but you know, at least you're not sweating or getting sunburned. You shouldn't be sunburned anyhow because you should have your sunscreen on, However, throw your hoodie on, throw a coat on, but keep up with it. It will really help come next season because that's one of the biggest things I try to do is figure out shortcuts for you guys to make life easier. Um, so weeding is very important. Keep raking your leaves, keep bringing them in to use them as compost or mulch if you want. That's what I do. Um, it, they will go right on the beds, uh, all my beds actually. And if you guys are overwintering your fall mums and they are in the ground like mine are, um, and you do not want to cut, don't cut them back to the ground. I, I mean, I will shape them back. I'll cut them down about half. And this is what works for me. I, I don't, you know, somebody else might tell you different. Do what you want. Like I always tell you guys, do what you want. Um, what I do is I cut my mum halfway back. I take the leaves and stuff it in there. Now, I don't do that until they're done, like done. You know, they're done blooming, they're gross, they've gotten frozen. And honestly, that's usually, for me, I mean, it's, into, it's well into November, so you got some time here. But I use that on my roses and on my mums, I, I stuff them in there. And I, have, I never have a problem getting them to come back. Um, if you guys are deciding to put yours in the ground, please remember to find a full sunny spot, okay? Loosen those roots. If you've kept them in the little like eight, nine inch pots, chances are with them being water and fertilizer hogs, how they are, those roots are girdled. 
So you really need to break them up. Again, get them in the ground. Let them bloom, let them do their thing, let them die back. Then give them a little bit of haircut. Please don't cut them all the way down because you really need to help protect them a little bit. It just kind of helps. That's all I'm gonna say. It's like an insurance policy. Um, next on the list, I know some of you guys like myself utilize house plants in your containers, um, tropical plants. Uh, if you have cannas, uh, I hope you got them out already, but if you didn't, get them out. Get, get them out, get them dusted off. I know a lot of you guys know this already, but for those of you that tried them this year, if you want to overwinter them, you, you got to get them out and get them in the garage or a basement. Um, that's the only way you're going to, and, and you'll have to replant them next year. Um, as far as our tropical hibiscus, I love them. And I know a lot of people are like, mine got so ugly and died. Okay, it, it's never a guarantee that they're going to make it. But I know people that have had tropical hibiscus that put them out every summer and bring them in. And obviously they keep having to get bigger and bigger pots. But I think they're one, one of the persons I know is like eight years old. So remember, these grow down south like no problem. Just year round, get bigger and bigger and bigger. I know if you're saying, Heather, ours is like three and a half foot tall. Okay, for starters, if you're just trying to get it through the winter like I am mine, I am going to cut quite a bit of this down. Um, I, <laughs> it'll probably have about six inches left. Um, our house plants need to go to sleep, just like the perennials, just like our trees and shrubs. Everything needs a resting period, well, unless it's amaryllis, you're forcing bulbs or Christmas cactus. Um, but these guys will not get fertilized no more, not until next spring when the time changes and we wake them back up. I will cut this down. And I will not keep these roots super wet. You have to change your watering habit. And if this is something where you had it outside, when you cut it back, cut it back outside, go dig in your garage, your shed, whatever, find your potting soil. You really need to change out your soil. And I say that just because otherwise, there's a lot of bugs that come in the soil. And I don't want to see you guys bring these in, um, which by the way, everybody goes, well, how, how cold can they take it? Mine aren't staying out under 40, I'll tell you that. 42 even maybe, uh, I'll bring them in. I mean, they're hardy suckers, don't get me wrong, it freezes down in Florida too. Um, but I'm not gonna, I'm not chancing it. I'll cut them back. This guy will get repotted in fresh soil. And this too is where if you had it in a big pot, you can really kind of gauge and see, do you need that big of a pot? Because I understand not everybody has a lot of space. I'm, I'm in the same boat, I'm really limited. And I'm not gonna heat a greenhouse for a couple, that's not gonna happen, that's ludicrous. But you need to change out your soil. I don't wanna see you guys bring them in and then all of a sudden the bugs that aren't liking this 45 degrees or whatever, all of a sudden you bring them in to a nice warm house and they're like, hello. And you're like, oh my God. So promise me you'll do that. Um, you can trim them back, no fertilizer, uh, just enough water to keep them going. That's, that's it. Don't water them heavy, you will root rot them because they don't uptake it as much. They definitely don't. And don't put them, you can put them by windows, most of them really appreciate that. Our light intensity is down anyhow. However, don't put them by your heat vent. I've seen so many people kill them just by putting them by their heat vent. And they're like, oh, what happened? Don't do that. That's just too, it's just too extreme. So I hope that helps with encouraging you guys to do that. Um, stay tuned. When we come back, we're going to have our final wrap up and one little other piece of advice for fall.
Hi, I'm TV2 Sports Talk's Bill Morgan. Some people are outstanding at playing sports, and then there's me. While we at TV2 Sports Talk may have never been All-State on the field, we are Tuscarawas County's MVP when it comes to local television sports talk and play-by-play. -play. Catch TV2 Sports Talk Wednesday nights at 7 and Friday afternoons at 5 on DMG Channel 2. Just wanting to be a, you know, a police officer, I knew this was a great start, and it turned out to be a fantastic one. Just be able to actually see what you're doing, what you're working on, and understand how you can take one thing and turn it into something else. We got to creatively use skills and academics and see how we can place them into our fields. It was pretty much I had the key to open the door, and that was from Buckeye. Hi everybody, welcome back. Okay, so I know everybody decorates, I do too. So real quick before you guys go, corn stalks. Now I know up by the Tuscora Park and in many parts of Dover, I have heard your pain about the deer, the rabbits, the groundhogs. Notice on my corn stalks, no corn. You are just asking for it. I mean, you'll have it tied up somewhere and you'll come out one morning and it'll be in shrapnels or pieces will be pulled out. They will go after it. I mean, it's fall. They're trying to bulk up for winter. If you have deer and groundhog around, do me a favor, take the corn cobs off just as a safety measure. Otherwise, you're going to be running back and buying, trying to buy more corn stalks. So, um, with that thought, just that little tip, but with that thought, I had a really wonderful season. I loved all the compliments you guys have given me. Email me, let me know what you guys wanna learn and do. I'm all about that. So you have all winter to think about this, okay? Um, hopefully we will have a Christmas special. I'm sure TV2 will keep you posted on that. But everybody take care. Have a wonderful Halloween, a wonderful Thanksgiving, and hopefully I'll be able to say Merry Christmas. Until then, thanks for a wonderful season. season. Happy gardening, and have a great holiday.